This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial, and in this lesson, we're going to round out our introductory look at 4K workflows inside of Media Composer version 8.3. Now you'll remember in the last lesson we talked about working with red files inside of Media Composer. In this lesson we're actually going to start out already having our footage transcoded and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we can take a round trip from Media Composer to DaVinci Resolve if that happens to be you know your preferred method of color correction we can go from Media Composer to DaVinci Resolve and back again very very easily using the new DNX HR media that we already have inside of our Avid Media Files folder or inside of Resolve we can relink back to that red footage so that we don't lose a generation going through the whole process. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for my Windows friends out there. And I do obviously want to point out before we get started that I am using the most current version of Media Composer as of this recording, of course, and that is version 8.3. You can see it right there. Okay, now what's also important to keep in mind, and I'll show you this when I get into Resolve, is that I'm using the most recent version of Resolve as of this recording. Now, like I said, we'll get to that in just a second because the first thing we need to do is we need to get in here. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to bring this out here to show you that we are using the new DNX HR HQ codec here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my columns here. What we're going to do is we're just going to come all the way down and I'm going to turn on the raster dimension just so that you can see that all of this footage is of course, and let's switch over to our format tab here, all of this footage has been transcoded at the flat aspect ratio of 3996 by 2160 P. So that is the DCI flat aspect ratio that we're gonna be working with to send this sequence to resolve and back again. Now here's something else that's exceptionally important that I do want to mention. I wanna make sure that I mention this so that it doesn't, you know, nothing falls off the rails in your whole uh, workflow process. And that is for you to work in the DCI resolutions, the digital cinema resolutions inside of DaVinci Resolve you need to be working with the full version of Resolve, the $1,000 version, not the free version. So that's something exceptionally important to keep in mind. Like I said, if you're working with the DCI project types inside of Media Composer, you do need the full version of Resolve. Okay, so let's come in here. You know, I've already got some in and out points marked, but we'll just mark some new ones here. We'll just drop this into a new timeline. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that normally I don't send audio to Resolve. What I will normally do, because you know, I see some editors that will have you know timelines that have you know 80 layers of audio. I wouldn't even get into sending that to resolve. What I would probably do is duplicate the sequence. I would mix down the audio so it's a two-channel stereo file so that you have it as a reference, and then you'll be doing that, sending that through as part of the round trip as opposed to sending all 87 layers through. You don't need to send that through, just a stereo mix down so that obviously you have that as a reference. Okay. Now in this case, I'm just going to leave everything the way that it is. I'm just going to delete this A2 because I don't need it. And like I said, nothing crazy. And I think what I'll do just for kicks is I'm just going to put some dissolves in between these shots. Now obviously, keep in mind that the whole process or the whole uh, workflow through to resolve is not going to support all effects. So keep that in mind. But obviously, basic things like dissolves will be supported. And of course, I do want to add this to all the transitions here. There we go. What I'll even do is just give it a little bit of fade up at the top. And we'll give it a fade down to tail at the end. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a crazy color correction inside of Resolve. I'm just going to take these shots. I'm going to make them look completely wrong just so that when we send it back to Media Composer, you can see exactly what's happening. I'm not going to get into minor tweaks because I don't want you to think I'm pulling a fast one on you or anything. Okay, so let's come back over here to our bin. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this 4K DCI flat. Okay, we're going to save this. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our export setting. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is with my sequence selected here, and let's make sure I actually have the entire sequence selected by marking an in and out point and selecting all the layers. That'll become relevant in just a second here. What I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to say export. Now I actually already have a preset set to go. So let's step in and let me show you exactly what's going on with my AAF export preset. 
So I'm simply going to click on the Options button to open up the Export Settings window. Now, you remember I said I was going to mark the in and out point at the start and the end, and I was going to select all the tracks. What I, of course, need to do is make sure that Use Marks is selected, basically meaning to use the Mark In and Mark Out point. And you'll see that I also have check mark to Use Enabled Audio Track or Use Enabled Tracks, which will include video and audio. Now, in this case, because I'm, you know, in the past, I've only been exporting video. That's the only reason that I have include all video slash data tracks in sequence. But in this case, if I wanted to send audio through as well, I could simply select audio as well. You'll see in this case, it's set, it's set to export all tracks. And you remember I mentioned you're going to want to mix your audio down just that you're just exporting a two channel stereo file for your reference inside of Resolve. Now, the audio and video setup is exactly the same. You know, like I said, whether you're exporting just video just audio or both video and audio. We're just linking to. We're not exporting any media, we're not consolidating anything, we're not doing anything. Just a basic link to. Same with both video and audio. Now I could come and do this as a save as, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel this because in my previous setup it was set to export video only, which for the purposes of what we're doing is perfectly fine. So all we're going to do, simply right click, come to export, we're going to send this to the desktop. We're going to call it 4K DCI flat AAF. I'm going to click save. Now my timeline here is like 30 seconds long. But remember, because we're not exporting any video or anything like that, literally your sequence should export in, you know, probably less than 30 seconds, depending on obviously how long your sequence is. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hide Media Composer here. You'll see there's my AAF on the desktop. If I say get info, you'll see it's tiny. It's less than a megabyte big. Okay. We're now ready to get into Resolve and to open this AAF. So let's do that. Okay, so let's just Command and Tab into DaVinci Resolve. Obviously an Alt and Tab from my Windows friends out there. Let's just log in as me here. Okay, and let's just create a new project here. We're going to call this 4K DCI Flat. Okay. We'll simply say create, I'll simply say open. Now remember before I mentioned that you want to be using the most recent version of DaVinci Resolve. Now as of this recording, the most recent version is 11.2.1.002. This version added support for the DNX HR codec. Okay, so what we want to do now to get our timeline into Resolve is to simply navigate up to file. I'm going to come down to import AAF. What's going to happen is Resolve is going to ask me where the AAF file is. I'm just simply going to come to the desktop. I'm going to select my 4K DCI flat AAF. I'm simply going to say open. I'm now going to be brought to the load AAF window, which is where I can get in. I can rename the timeline to something that I want. I can change the master timeline start time code. You'll see that I can get in. I can automatically obviously set the project settings. I can obviously automatically import source clips into the media pool. Now there's another option in here that I'm going to get back to in just a second. But you'll see right now the resolution timeline is set to be that 4K DCI flat 3996 by 2160. And if I happen to be working with a mixed frame rate timeline, I can have the mixed frame rate format be to resolve or to none. We're just going to leave it as resolve because I don't have any mixed frame rates in here. And I'm simply going to say open. Now I'm just going to stop talking for one second. Because as you could probably hear, my drives were going a little bit crazy there. That's Resolve loading up this sequence. Now what it's actually doing is, it's scanning my Avid Media Files folder for that media. Because remember, I didn't export any media. We're doing everything as an AMA link to. And there you go. Take a look at this. I can now come through and there is that 4K media, that DNxHR media here in Resolve. Of course, I can come back. I can simply hit play. You'll see. Let's find something we got a little bit more movement in here. There we go. Looking pretty good. Very, very nice. Okay, now of course it is important for me to point out that once I imported this media, it is of course going to appear in the media pool. You'll see I can come up to media pool and there are those four shots there. We can actually come back to the media tab. Here they are right here. I can simply select it and you'll see over here that this clip is of course 4K flat 3996 by 2160 and it is the DNxHR high quality codec. So you can see everything's working exactly the way that we want it to. What I'm going to do, so I'm just going to come to the color tab. Like I said, we're going to just do a garbage color correction on this. All we're basically going to do is on this shot, I'll set the saturation to be zero. On the next shot, let's take this shot. You know what we're going to do with this one? I think we're just going to take all of the, we're going to take everything but the red out of this, just for kicks, okay? And we'll just do the same thing here, just for fun. 
Everything will be glowing red, very nice. Come down to the next shot here. Um, I think we'll just do the same thing here. We'll just set the saturation to be zero. And we'll do the same thing maybe on the last one here. What do we have a shot of? The bridge here. You know what? Let's just play around with the colors here. Just leave lots of green in here, okay? Just because I want this footage to really stand out as being completely different. I, won't, I don't want to make any minor modifications. So you think, like I said earlier, that I'm pulling a fast one on you. So we've got some really, really wrong looking footage, but that's okay for the purpose of what we're doing. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come to the Deliver tab. Now you're going to see up here we're on the basic export settings. What we're going to do is we're going to set our preset for the easy setup to be Avid AAF Round Trip. Now the next and probably most important step of the process is right here, which is the codec. The codec that we want to use, we're going to drop that down, of course, because I'm using the most recent version of Resolve. If I scroll down here, you're going to see that right down at the bottom, I have my DNxHR codecs, which in this case, we're going to set to be the high quality 8-bit codec. Now, of course, if I had audio, I could export that as well, which I don't, so we're not going to export audio. I could get in and do some intermediate uh, settings here in the render settings or some advanced settings, but all we're basically going to do is we're going to add this job to the render queue. Of course, now we're going to want to tell Resolve where it's going to render out this new DNX HR media as well as put the AAF file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my G-Speed Studio R. I'm just going to drop that down. And I actually have a folder here called MC Resolve Round Trip. I'm simply going to select that folder. I'm going to say OK, and it's going to appear over here in the render queue. All I need to do now is basically say Start Render. And you're going to see that Resolve is going to render this timeline. Of course, it's again, obviously, only 30 seconds. But it's rendering this timeline pretty darn quick in 4K. Now, people are probably going to be thinking, you know, Kev, you know, what were you using as far as your, you know, CPU setup and everything like that? What I'm using is a 12 core Mac Pro garbage can system with 32 gigs of RAM. So obviously keep that in mind. Your system mileage will vary depending on the system that you happen to be using. But basically, we're now done. What I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to hide resolve. I'm going to command and tab back into Avid Media Composer. Let's actually just close this bin. We're just going to create a new bin. We're going to call this from resolve. Okay. And now what's important to keep in mind is that I'm going to come to my G Speed Studio RAID here. I'm going to come down to my MC Resolve Round Trip because what's basically happened is, is that Resolve has rendered out these MXF files and the AAF file into the same folder. So what we need to do is put that media where it needs to go inside of Avid Media Files, inside of MXF, inside of the one folder right here. We're just going to take these four clips and we're just going to drag them and drop them in there. Now, we're going to leave this file here just for the purposes of what we're doing because we're going to import from there. But what's going to happen is, is that as soon as I go back into Media Composer, you're going to see it quickly rebuilding the database. All I need to do now is simply take my bin here from Resolve. We're going to import my AAF. We're going to come, of course, to the G Speed Studio RAID. Let's come down to our MC Resolve round trip. There's my AAF file. I'm simply going to say open. You're going to see literally in a matter of seconds, I now have the four clips that were rendered out of Resolve and my timeline here, and guess what I now have? I can now simply hit play, and here's my footage in black and white. Again, only red. Again, in black and white, or in that beautiful green color. So we've basically done a complete round trip from Media Composer to Resolve and back again. Now, let me throw a little hypothetical out there for you. What if once I got to the resolve step, I didn't want to use that DNX HR media anymore. I wanted to go back to the original 4K footage to then render that back to DNX HR. How would I go about doing that? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to command and tab back into DaVinci Resolve, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come back and we're going to import another timeline. Let's do this. I'm going to come up to file. I'm going to come down to import AAF EDL. What we're going to do is we're going to import the same file here. I'm simply going to say open. What we're going to do is we're going to call this timeline DCI flat 4K original. Okay. What we're going to do at this point in the process is instead of relinking to the DNX HR media, we're going to link to the source camera files. Once I'm done, all I'm going to do is simply say OK. You're going to notice that almost instantly everything relinks. And if you take a look down at the timeline now, this is now relinked back to the original red footage on my drive. 
So I can now basically take this and color correct the original source media. And of course, you'll see that if I come back to the media pool right here, we've got what looks like duplicate media. What I'm going to do is just come back to the media tab here because you'll see now that as I come through, there's my original DNxHR clip. And you'll see that I also have its 4K counterpart in here at 4096 by 2304, which is the original size of that 4K red file before it was transcoded inside of Avid Media Composer. Okay, at this point, all I would now need to do is do the color correction however I want to, render this file out of Resolve as DNxHR Media. I can re-import that AAF file back into Media Composer and complete the round trip. Okay, so I hope this lesson has shown you that you now have an alternate to use if you don't want to do your color correction inside a Media Composer using obviously the Symphony Color Correction or a third-party color correction tool. You can send your Media Composer timeline in 4K to Resolve, do all your work there and send it back literally in no time flat. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button, and don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.